Hi everyone, welcome to Virtual Visit. My name is Kirsten, one of the several tour guides with the New York State Office of General Services. And though many of us are still working at home, like myself, I'm not gonna let that stop me from taking you on a virtual tour and talk about the history behind the largest room in the New York State Capitol building, the Assembly Chamber. It's home to New York State's 150 assembly members, all of whom are elected to a two-year term as one half of the lawmaking arm of state government, known as the legislative branch. The other half is the New York State Senate. Dedicated in 1879, this grand space opened with much fanfare and a debt of gratitude to its designer, Leopold Eidlitz. Eidlitz was born in Prague in 1823, educated in Vienna, and immigrated to the United States in 1843. In time, he would find himself immersed in Gothic Revival architecture. Aside from the New York State Capitol, Idolitz's major commissions included the Brooklyn Academy of Music, New York Produce Exchange, and the Tweed Courthouse. Idolitz designed the Assembly Chamber in a Moorish Gothic style featuring a magnificent groined vaulted sandstone ceiling that rose 56 feet from the floor to the apex. The incised sandstone was decorated in lavish colors of ultramarine, flaming vermilion, black, and gold. Four massive polished red granite columns, each four feet thick, supported the groined vaulted ceiling. Natural light streamed into the chamber through large clear and stained glass windows located on the north and south walls. The furniture, also designed by Eidolitz, featured solid mahogany and elegant red leather. However, the crowning achievement of the original assembly chamber were the two beautiful murals in the upper walls, high above the member's desk. Painted on the bare sandstone by renowned American artist William Morris Hunt, these 40-foot murals were entitled The Discoverer and The Flight of Night. Hunt's murals placed him at the forefront of the American mural movement at the turn of the 20th century. The sandstone walls and ceilings hard surfaces created incredibly poor acoustics in the assembly chamber. That wasn't the only problem. Not long after the chamber officially opened, members began finding dust and small pieces of stone on their desks. Within a year, a fractured stone rib was discovered in the ceiling. Idolitz returned to Albany to oversee the repair work. The damaged stone, weighing one ton, was cut out and 60 tons of stone and brick were placed above the arch to relieve unequal pressure. Throughout the 1880s, several investigations delved into the cause of the structural failure. Finally, in 1888, it was decided that the central vault be removed and replaced with a flat coffered oak ceiling. This newly constructed ceiling would soon find itself at the center of a scandal. Unsettling rumors began circulating that the contractor had substituted paper mache for oak panels and made an enormous profit. The outraged assembly members responded with another investigation, only to discover that the rumor was in fact true. And to top it all off, the scandalous coffered ceiling was built at a lower level, obscuring Hunt's beautiful murals from the public forever. But in an odd twist of fate, it was the paper mache that would save the assembly chamber from destruction. In 1911, a devastating fire swept through the Capitol, reducing everything, destroying much of the western half of the building. As the fire raced toward the assembly chamber, many feared that if the chamber was destroyed, the entire building would be lost. However, as fire hoses pumped water into the assembly chamber, the paper mache ceiling absorbed the water and not only slowed the progress of the fire, but saved the eastern half of the building as well. Today, although still an impressive room, the chamber only slightly resembles the original room of 1879, including the loss of those beautiful murals. They must have been remarkable when they were first painted by Hunt. The inspiration came from a translation of a Persian poem that was sent to him by his brother in 1846. The Flight of Night depicts Anahita, Persian moon goddess, literally fleeing the night and racing toward the rising sun. She is led by a trusted guide and three powerful steeds. To some, this symbolizes the night before the dawn of civilization. The second mural, the Discoverer, appears more of a tribute to exploration. Columbus sailing out into the unknown, following the setting sun. A figure symbolizing fortune holds the tiller. Science unrolls her scroll. Hope points the way, and faith hides her face, allowing the waves to take her where they will. It's amazing how much information you can find in a piece of art. Well, there you have it. A quick visit in the history behind the New York State Assembly Chamber. My name is Kirsten, and we hope to see you for the next installment of Virtual Visits.